Yeah, one one hand each. One hand each. Keep it light. Keep it easy. Hey, Glenn. Good morning. Yeah. And now this pulls free. This is like a feel about like that. Good. Yeah. Now the dinky touch pulls loose. It pulls and pops loose. Yeah. You feel like. <laughs> right. Feel this. This foot, please. I'll put a hand here. Thank you. Yeah. Good. And about like that. I can't even stop here. There he is. Thank you. Yeah, so the, the pop. That's pretty good. The feeling here. You get into a bottle. Yeah. Have that little. Uh -huh. Like you're plucking a chicken. That's right. That's good. It's a little pluck. Little. Just a little. Pop. Little pop. Little. Little dinky pluck, huh? Mm -hmm. There you go. This surface. Oh, I need to come on. Yeah, you want a tall guy. <laughs> it's going to be damn easy for him. It'll be tougher on you. Actually, he and David ought to be going, and you and Prentice ought to be going to make it easy on each other. That's right. Prentice is scary. That's true. <laughs> David and Prentice are both scary. Nice. Nice. Now, watch out for the lift. there, right? Well, you plant it because you have a habit of... That's the front corner. The man's stepping forward. We're stepping with him. As we step with him, the foot lands on the line. Foot's with him, lands on the line. Little touch. The little touch happens to break loose and the front corner happens automatically. Boom. We throw him more to the side, not over the big loopy loop thing, right? So if we had a box, we've defined the first corner of this box. Second corner, come on. I'll abuse Pat some more. Man stepping forward and backward. <laughs> we go where? We go the same damn place. We do what with our hand? We do the same damn thing, but the hand holds on a little bit. It just doesn't quite turn loose. We're not pulling so hard that it busts this time. We're just holding. We're just holding it. Slightly longer. And then <laughs> our foot doesn't have to do much, but maybe adjust. Ink. That much. You see that little dink, little thing? The hand that's at the collar, it's still at the collar. We've done our little touch job and our hips change just slightly. And you'll see it happening in this foot right here. It doesn't lift up on the ground, you don't hop up and down, you just turn slightly. And where are we at? We're in the magic spot for Osotogari. Now you could do a giant whack them down Osotogari, tear them loose from the floor, turn them upside down, put them on their head. Let's not do that today. Okie doke. Just be aware that it's there. Let's turn in a different direction. Same thing. We land on the line. Hey, I did it. Cool. <laughs> we make the little touch. Hey, I did that too. That's pretty cool. He's kind of up in the air a little bit. I make the little shift in my hip, but the hand stays connected to him. That's the tricky bit here. And woo. And again, think about that swan. Oh, we're just touching him lightly right here. When you want to execute a sotogari, the tendency is to conceive of this thing as a giant arc going like that. I would encourage you not to do that. I would encourage you rather to think about it as a tiny little reaping action for now. And later, if you want to do the giant arky thing, I completely blew that because I'm talking. Um, I should be here. You can do the big arc thing. You can add a bunch of power. But we actually want to throw him as our knee comes in contact behind his, his knee or thereabouts with a pointed toe. See my toe point? And a little displacement. Very, very small. Very, very light. This thing. Kind of like, I don't know. We don't ever do that. But <laughs> I'm flipping a... Yeah, if you had a quarter on the floor and you wanted to make it fly behind you, you're keeping it way low on the ground, or you're knocking some stuff off your shoe maybe. <laughs> it's that little thing. Ball of the foot on the support leg, still critical. Why is the ball of the foot support crit leg critical? Anybody tell me? Don't get your damn leg broken, that's right. 
and because we need to make these little adjustments too by the way the adjustment that allowed you to turn all the way here last time we're doing a slightly smaller turn this time to make this placement right so when you put it all together you step out on this line boom you step out on the line you make the same stimulus boom <laughs> step on the line make the same stimulus boom. be like that cool little tiny reap not a giant god killing reap we tend to think of these power actions as coming from the core of the body and the big muscles down. You actually want the action to fire from the foot to the ankle, to the knee, to the hip. So it fires from the little stuff down at the end of your, of your limb going up like this. Most people think of these reaps as firing from the shoulder and then to the elbow or to, or to the knee, to the ankle and the toes. Start at the toes. Start at the toes and pop it up from there. Just like that. Cool? Little thing. Try it. Try it. I'll come around and work with you. Make that little scooch in your hip. There you go. See him turn like a monster. <laughs> wow, he, pop, he popped right over in front of me. Look at that. Look at him just pop over there for you like, hey, why don't you throw me in a solar guard? You say, oh, thank you very much. I think I will. <laughs> Delighted to, my friend. Exactly. Good. Don't have to slam them. Just try to get this knee behind that knee and point that toe and make an action about that thing. Tiny. Good, Nancy. On the line. Good. Look at him jump over on one leg for you. That's beautiful. Now, optimally, we don't actually want him to break free from that back leg. And we step here, and this changes. Okay. That other foot stays stuck to the floor, ideally. If it jumps up in the air and flies around, he can adjust with it and stuff can happen. I'd like him to still be just feeling almost like he could still be a stable thing when I do this part to him. Okay, don't. Mm -hmm. So when you touch him, yeah. mm -hmm. see the back foot still on the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Nice. There you go. Dave. Point the toe, not put the weight on. If the toe comes down like this, uh -huh. the next thing your body physiologically wants to do is that. Oh, yeah. And we don't want that. We want a ballet thing. When this gets here, it wants to live on the tippy toe right there. And like the toenail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so making him fall down by straightening the leg is wrong. That is like correct. Well, it it's not wrong. Here. It's a different throw. If I do this and then go. That's yeah. right. That's a different throw. Down too, but that's that's a diff not, it's not wrong. It's, it's just not the throw we're talking about. Okay. Is that a Soto Otoshi? That's Otoshi. That's correct. Hey, like plus. Yeah. It's pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. I think you might have an Osoto in your life. Okay. Let me watch you again. It's beautiful. I love Soto. Oh, yeah? I mean, Soto. I mean, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Great. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. His fault. It's all his fault. I understand. Yeah, too far turn. Too far turn. So think about the box again. The first shot was here. You throw him to the side of the box here. This will be this corner of the box. Okay. Okay. So when your hip rotates on this, it only rotates just an inch. Yeah, better. Very nice, gentlemen. Very nice. Your scooch. Yeah. So you throw him through the side of the box. So if there's a box, right, and the first corner of the box was to throw him here, the second corner of the box is to throw him there. Your turn puts you through the flat side of the box here rather than there. Okay. So we're stepping. Mm-hmm. And then oh, and and then you just kind of bring it into your shoulder as you lean and step through? You bring it into your shoulder casually. Sure. With a feeling of huh. Oh, there's a tendency to bring it into the shoulder like I'm the boss. I'm doing judo to you. I'm going to hold you here and I'm going to slam your ass. No, 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 no. The swan, right? <laughs> Ichi no the swan. Hmm. It just goes like that. Hmm. This pole just relaxes. 
the pulling actions that we use, just like that little pull that broke loose, the pulling actions we use, think of them as moments. They're just like pull, and then everything just turns loose and follows. It's a momentary pulse of energy. It's not a long dragging action. If I have to do a long dragging action, I gotta do a thing with my foot which centers my body around that long dragging action and forces all this to compress to do that action, right? I actually want an action that's gonna touch and then basically turn loose but stay in contact and float into their physiological structure as my posture turns, causes their posture to do its job turning and then make my entry right here. So at the end, it'll feel like this. We touch the foot. There we go. You feel this? <laughs> it just feels like I'm, I'm not even giving you a good massage. I'm just saying, how you doing, buddy? It just feels like that. Then the reef actually just creeps around here, the toe points. And if you want to, this is a nice kind of practice. You just hold them. You hang here. You visit for a while. He's getting a little heavier on my collar now. And you don't ever throw the guy. You just have fun. And their body will get tired of this shit after a while. <laughs> and when it does, that's actually where the throw happens. You hang them up in space and isometrically contain them in an unstable asymmetrical position. Hang them in space for a long time. And that long time might be a half second in reality. But in practice, you can stretch it out. It can be a long time. You hang them and just hang them. If the goal is always to go bam and slam them, the judo goal, make them flat to the earth, you know, in one flat pancake, that's okay. But it's actually insufficient to build great kazushi. What you're actually after after a while is never to slam them unless you just want to and it's a special occasion and by God, he needed to have his head rattled, right? But you actually just want to hang them in space in an unstable place for as long as possible. Uh, and then as they react, as their body gets tired of that and says, I'm tired of this, I think I'll finally get out of it, that's where the throw happens. That's when you actually tear them loose. Now, when people are reflexive and fast, that's gonna happen in a quarter second. But that moment of hanging them you can stretch it out in easy practice with each other, and you can really milk it for, uh, for that feeling. Okay? Mm -hmm. Cool. Other questions? All right. So Osoto Gari, you just did Osoto, and Osoto in pre-weight class judo, pre-1958, about half of all competitive throws that won things in tournaments were Osoto Gari. <laughs> so Osoto Gari took about 50% of all the effective throwing action, and every other throw in the book, the other 40 throws in the Goku, or the 39 throws in the Goku, were the other half. So if you got Osotogari and that's all you ever got, you got a big ass chunk of it. And it's a huge monster. This little thing that turns them upside down on their heads, a huge monster. It's a great thing to have in your back pocket. There's no end to times when it shows up unbidden. The third action, the third point on the corner, so let's review. We've had the first corner, right? We've had the box. He stepped here. We did the little pull that, and this thing shot through. And we were on the ball of the foot so our foot could turn and our hip could rotate under easily. And our other foot landed and boom, he rolls through space as the crack of our ass lands on his thigh. He rolls over and that's COE, Ipon COE. Point one. Point two, we're looking at that same box. And I noticed some of you had trouble as we did point two in Osoto, that you were turning to throw him through the side of the box. If we think about this as a box in space, the next corner I'm looking for is actually the corner that's right over here by my friend from Castle Rock. Boom, right? That's corner number two. Third corner, where's that gonna be? Where? Yeah, well there's one here and there's one there. That's right, there's two more corners, right? Two more corners. Next corner is odd, because as I scooch my foot over on the line, I don't do a damn thing. It doesn't move at all. It just lands there, and this pull happens until that foot breaks loose. And then I say, oh, I think I'm gonna slip over here. And we're doing an Ochi form. Say, hey, man, right there. We're putting him back on his ass. 
Again, the temptation will be to do big, powerful driving actions. And what we like, really, is the foot lands, my foot lands. The foot lands on the line, my foot lands on the line. Foot lands on the line, pull happens. Oh, look where his leg went. It's conveniently located, so as I reach out and make this little, this is the magic trick. Whee! Whee! Everybody do this. Whee! You don't have to reach very far. Whee! Point the toe. You just, you don't have to look down even. Reach over there. If he has two legs, it'll be in the vicinity, I promise. You don't have to like, mm, I want to get it in there. Yeah? Just go, mm. This dumb little thing right here. The man's here. The man's here. Oh, look at that. That's what it becomes. Okie doke. So this is a forward action. You may have an Ochi in your repertoire in which he's, you get in there, oh, I jump in there and slam him. Displace his center, blast his ass back. Don't do it. Not for this. No. Not for the swan. Don't do it. Don't do it. See how light, see how little you have to do. Oh. In fact, for now, the only change I want you to do with the hand is just make the hand a flat palm. Don't even grip. Let your fingers tickle on him a little bit. And you just sort of brush him in a little bit if the height will allow for it. If the height doesn't allow for it, you're down here in a, a lower position. And just let this pull elongate until you see this little action come out of his body. Okay. Again, the toe points. Doesn't get flat to the ground. Point. Makes a small little reaping action. This is Ochi Guard. Question? Try it. Here, go. Hey! Holy moly! Watch the toe. Tendency is to lift the foot like this. Yes. Watch out for this. Same place here. Mm -hmm. Same damn place. But it doesn't have to wiggle or move or anything. It just stays like where it lands. Then this draws until his foot moves and you're in the spot. Like magic. And then the main thing is pointing the toe at that point. Right there you had a little stiff leg. The more stiff your leg is, the tougher it's going to be to make that little circle efficient. You want something that just feels like... Think about a cat reaching out and snatching a mouse. Meow! It's about like that. It's not like a... Just a... Zing. Hey, how you doing? I don't have my glasses. I just... Oh, that's, that's a George over there. <laughs> I feel like his leg is still really far back in a position. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're early is all. So, the timing is according to what Uke does. You can't decide when you're going to reap. You're only going to reap when you've got him to do his thing. Okay. And so, his foot lands, and our foot lands. Okay. His foot lands, our foot lands, the draw begins. And somewhere in time and space, his body will move. It okay. just did, finally. And when it did, then I say, oh, I think I'll do my thing. Okay. But everybody's going to be different. So it might be just a tickle to make your foot move, <laughs> right? Yep. And it may be that if you're hanging your leg back or your, your weight's funny or your balance's funny, maybe this leg gets stiff. It takes a long time before that foot moves. So it's probably because he was straightening his knee a little more than he should that made him hang the leg back. I was on my heel. You're probably on your heel. <laughs> Get off your fucking heel. Okay, there you go. All right. Amen. Amen, brother. Yeah. A little pointy. Little pointy. <laughs> when we actually get the toes to really point, you get twenty percent more power stroke out of that leg. When the foot is flat and moving, and we're reaping with the kind of flaccid foot, you, you miss a little bit of the power. But when it actually points like a damn ballerina, it can be a sharp, short little zing zing. Pretty nice. See it again. <laughs> yeah, just make sure that your foot isn't reaping like this. Point your toe like a ballet. Yeah. Well, the tendency is to be the toe get a flat to the ground a little bit. Do this. Yeah. 
Just draw, draw a circle with the nail. Mm -hmm. Leading with your heel. So when you reach in, your foot went like this. And went back. So you need to do practice, remedial practice. Drawing circles with your toe. Hold. 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 Not heel. Heel and doing it. Heel's your big ass muscle. Huh. You want it all down to your ankle. Something to think. think about a cat going down. That's just shit. Your heel won't do that because it's being driven by these ones. You want it happening down here first. And work it up from Just hold until his foot moves. Oof. You reach that heel first, Charles. Pretty good, but don't reach heel first. Reach toe first. Yeah. Toe. Heel to toe is actually big muscle to little muscle. I want little to this. Like little things like that. So watch out. The heel tends to engage because I reach with my leg. I don't want to reach with my leg. Big muscles. I want to of being addicted to the feedback loop of pressure in the hands. You get a hold of your fella and you just get damn used to feeling <laughs> feeling all this pressure. And you go, bam, bam, and they slam and boom, and it's all slam, boom, bam, boom. And it feels good. And your nervous system says, oh, you're a predator. Have a little extra shot of testosterone. And you walk around feeling like, mm. And it feels great. It's a self-addicting endogenous high that comes from judo done badly. <laughs> <laughs> and if you fall prey to it, there will be a certain level of muscle tonus that you're just used to and amount of pressure in your grip and in your upper body that you lock in and you're doing judo. Man, you may know better. You may have had senseis whacking you with a stick saying, don't do that shit. And yet, the temptation will be there. And I would just say to that, don't yield to temptation. <laughs> don't do it. At least while you're really trying to refine your waza. And you're really trying to go toward principle. And you're really trying to make pristine stuff. If you're trying to exemplify Ichi Noe Sensei with his swan-like actions, every extra bit of <clears throat> that you're allowing yourself or you're imbibing in, because it is, it's kind of like, well, I think I'll just have a little extra toke. <laughs> I think I'll have an extra pill. You're just sort of giving yourself a little drug when you do that. And that's fine. We all need a way to get through the day. But by God, you've got to separate the recreational thing from the actual technical work thing. Okay? The recreational thing's cool if you and your buddy just want to get together and tear each other up. It's a short-lived life in judo. People who do that do about five or six years. And they may become world champions doing it. <laughs> but after five or six years, there's too much egregious injury that starts accruing on each other that they don't do judo anymore. But if you do judo like the swan, man, you're fifth done by the age of 21, and by the age of 47, you're hachi done, and you keep going until you're off into your 60s and 70s and whatever. Whew. As long as you can still walk and touch people with your hands, you know, you're cool. You could be blind and still be doing this stuff. So it's, it has a potential to be a judo that can take you far into the future. The judo of addiction were <clears throat> very short-lived, self-defeating cycle. Enjoy it while it lasts, but it's only going to be a short period of time. And then you'll go do something else. Or you'll be too busted up. And then we'll say, well, he was a great judo guy for a while. And then <laughs> he's gone. So long. So be careful with yourself. Be careful with the amount of pressure you allow yourself to habitually hang on with your hands. Okay? Fourth corner. Fourth corner. Here we are. Hey, man. So, first corner was here. Yeah. Second corner was here. Yeah. Third corner said, hey, why don't we go here? Throw him there. Yeah. Fourth corner. Is here? He's a. He's a. Same basic foot position. So we're landing with our foot in the same magic spot. Bam. 
Same basic action with the hand, bam, on the moment of contact as my foot hits the ground, a little touch. The big magic action we gotta learn to do is here, our hip changes about that much, because why? We're on the ball of the foot. When I first learned it, I didn't have the ball of the foot thing, and so my foot would land, and to get over here, I had to hop. <coughs> had to jump my ass up and down to get back off the heel, to get back onto the foot again, right? So if you find yourself hopping over there, that tells you something about how you landed to begin with. If you land over there on the ball of the foot, mm, you can just scooch. And that's all we're after here is a little scooch in the hip. Mm, right there. Timed along with this touch. And this foot lifts in the air. It doesn't lift and kick them. It doesn't lift and push hard. It lifts and touches two inches above the knee, right there. So you look, a couple of fingers and just put it right above your own knee and say, that's my spot, that's the spot we're after. That's your target zone. And again, elbow comes up as the draw happens. Light little touch here, and hmm. And you're not looking for him to fly through the air. You're looking for him to do what? A garuma, because it's called, he's a garuma. Garuma is not the action that makes him roll like this. That's otoshi. Garuma is the action that makes him twist like that. So the falling action, the throwing action, when it's correct, will be one that, see his body rotate out, the log is twisting. It's like a tornado grabbed it and just twisted it off and laid it down. That's actually what we're after there. Cool. This will make you crazy. <laughs> this will make you insane. Because, hey, we're going to go throw a guy while we're doing this. It's insane. It, it feels completely unstable and insane. Try it anyway. It's not insane if you do it for a moment. It becomes insane when you hang up here and you say, I'm here for a day and a half and Jesus, this sucks. You know? It ain't a day and a half. In, in actual play, it's that fast. That's it. It's not a moment that goes, it ain't like that. It might be like that while you learn it and position yourself. It's not like that when you do it. We have just a few minutes and then I'll conclude this thing. Go ahead, quick, get your partner. I'll stop talking so damn much. Four corner thing. It was called one entrance, four exits. And the point was not to do a combination. The point was that you get together with the fella and in one iteration, you walk up and you hit him and you say, hey man, you step to this spot and this happens to him. He says, oh, he's got a Iponcioi. And so he fights off of that. He busts loose of that. He won't let you do that. And so the next time you touch him, you step to that same spot and that comes out. And he goes, oh, holy shit. <laughs> he threw me to the opposite corner that time. That ain't right. So now, well, I got his number. <coughs> he's going to do a pawn or he's going to do hoochie, right? And so the next time you come out, again, that same condition happens. Boom, the foot hits the ground. The same touch hits the ground. But, oh, it's this corner, by the way. All right. Or, boom, it's that corner, by the way. The point of the game was that he would go to the same exact place in space, he would do the same exact feeling thing, stimuli from the collar grip, and from that condition, he would stimulate the guy in all four directions in sequence so that they didn't know how to defend forward, backward, this way or that way. And the, the, the basic methodology that he found was that if he stimulated them in all four directions and they successfully defended each one, the fifth one was always his. <laughs> because their nervous system was now caught in too much complex trying to, oh, you can't do that to me, oh, I gotta stop that, oh, stop this. That by the time you've stimulated them here and here and here and here, whatever you did is number five, which, and you could pick that one at random, <laughs> it became the killer. And the probability wave goes up. You're basically stacking them up with problems. You're not throwing the guy. You're not even trying to throw the guy. You're saying, here, you wanna have a judo fight? Okay, here's a little algebra. And they go, oh, okay, I did algebra, fine. And they solve that. You say, oh, thank you. Okay, we're gonna do judo again? Okay, how about a little calculus? You say, oh, okay, uh, let me, how's that? Yeah, that's pretty good, you did that good. How about a little geometry next time? Every time they attack, you hand them a different math problem to solve. 
And by the time they get to the fifth one, it gets real overloaded. Now we're into physics. Now we're into gobbledygook physics that I don't even know the names of. Math people know these things. The harder stuff for people like me. Arithmetic. Uh, yeah, arithmetic. So you're loading them up, you're loading their nervous system and their reflective uh, 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 compensatory systems up to a place where they kind of go into vapor lock. And that's the point of the thing. People treat it sort of like, oh, it's a combo. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Not that. Think about it as iterations. First time you step up to a fellow, you're playing, you're doing shia, you're doing rondori, you're just playing around, whatever. Boom! And they go, ooh. And you stimulate them with that and they dance off or they lock down or they do whatever cool things their nervous system has learned to do under those circumstances to bail out. And the next time you go to the same magic place, the same little spot. And by the way, we did it all on the step of the right foot forward. It could just as well be the right foot stepping back. It could be just as well the left foot stepping back. It could be just as well. You can extrapolate the same function for any direction of either foot. They change a little bit. The only real thing that changes is on back step. When he steps back, boom. So now this foot stepping back. I give him a little push before this pull happens. <laughs> All right, so you actually wind up with a thing that goes boom, boom, boom. You move your ass less when they go backwards. So there's a, there's a functionality in any direction. The fact that we did it on the step forward is just sort of a learning tool, right? It's a neat lesson, this Ichi Noi system, because it exemplifies a huge body of principle on one side and still affects it with Waza on the other. Kano had a famous saying that, that the two parts, the principle, the re, and the, and the technique, the waza, were two wheels. And you had to have both of them working on your cart. If you had a, a draw cart or a rickshaw, you had to have both wheels and an axle to get functionality. If all you ever did was nothing but pure principle stuff, man, you're really cool. You got a perfect wheel. But it has to be applied along that axle, that axis of practice of your life to that other wheel of waza. And if all you got is waza, you're out there and you're just building a catalog of Mean ass techniques you can do to anybody. He does this and I do that to him. He does this and I do that to him. Turn into like a sniper. Well, I got my shot lined up and pow! I did my throw. It's just waza. You're missing the functional principle. The principle stuff here is what? The timing of that step. The timing of that step and this line and this line. The timing of that step, this line, this line, and the fact that you're landing in such a way that you can move your ass without jumping up and down. The fact that your hand is held at shoulder height and not at some random place, and it's held with very little pressure in your palm. Okay? The fact that your eyes are not wandering around but are hanging around near their chest. Those are all the principle-oriented things. And if you just take one or two of those things and apply them to everything you do in judo, your judo will start building in a much more efficient way. If you just fixed one of them, if your habit was to sometimes let yourself land on that heel. And if all you walk away from today is I better get my damn heel off the ground when I'm playing judo. That will start affecting everything else in your, in your structure. If all you do from today is say, well, I keep my hand at my shoulder and I don't put it down here. That by itself is going to start affecting everything. If you just work on the timing of that step and all you got out of it was the timing and you apply it to every damn judo throw you got, you're going to start seeing difference. So you can take any piece of the picture of the principal side and start applying it and it'll stack it up into being a transformative practice. Cool? And that was the point of the, the Ichi Noi lesson as I took it. So my time's up and we're ready to get on deck and have just a few minutes. Let's take like a 10 minute break and then let's get right after it for the next fun and game.